Oh, we are live on Facebook. Yeah. So, hello everyone. Good afternoon. And today we are here with a wonderful webinar. And the moderator for this webinar is going to be Dr. Swati Popat Watts. So, not taking much time. Uh, but before that, I would just like all the attendees, all the delegates to note that if you have any questions, you can use the QA button that is on the mobile. You can type your questions and then we will come back with an article with all the answers from the panelists, from Dr. Watts, and we will be posting each and every uh, answer to the questions that you have asked. So Dr. Watts, all set to go for you now. Namaste. Oh, oh I have to switch this person off. Oh. So uh, namaskar to everybody and uh, welcome to the panel on art. Uh, arts are all about language, music, puppetry, dance, write, uh, write, uh, poems, uh, stories, films. Uh, all these are usually uh, segregated in our school curriculum as extracurricular activities or are called hobbies. But uh, many people follow this as a profession. And so I wonder uh, how these people take up these hobbies and extracurricular activities as their profession. And that is why we put together this panel today because enough of talking about lockdown and uh, uh, how to teach children online, et cetera. Uh, we need to remember that the arts are the most important in our life because they, they are the ones that actually help us in emotional development. So when all this uh, stress of Corona has settled and people are actually going to come out, it is these arts that are going to work as a therapy to these people because mental health is going to be at the rock bottom once this entire scenario of Corona is over. So it is very important for us always to remember, not only now, but even when we resume our normal schooling, that the earth, if you'll see the spelling of earth, it is E-A-R-T-H. Now I want you to remove A-R-T from it, which means if you remove art from earth, then you are just left with air. So, and that's exactly what's happening in today's uh, curriculum. Uh, we have subjects that are air, and we're just forgetting the arts. And that's exactly what people like Gijubai did. He brought the arts into the teaching of these air subjects. And that is why he was able to keep the active interest of these students alive. And the knowledge that they gained stayed lifelong. And that is why I have brought my buddy with me so that we never forget that this session is not about the air, it's about the art. And I'm very proud to introduce all of you to these four very fantastic panelists that we have. Each one is a kind of a, a king or queen in their own field. And uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce you all. Uh, I will be doing the introductions from the bottom of my heart, and then they will be doing it from the bottom of their socks. So, um, because they'll give you a lot more details, you know. So, the first panelist is Bela Potwani. She's founder and principal of Cosmic Kids International. But I know her as the puppet specialist because uh, she has been uh, working with puppets. Uh, and her actual, her entire demeanor as a human being is also that of fun, uh, always smiling, always hugging. Uh, so she's the kind of person that children would love to be around. Uh, so a big round of applause for uh, Bela. Uh, our next uh, panelist is uh, Jehan Manikshaw, uh, Director, Theatre Professionals Education and Head of School Drama School, Mumbai. But I know Jehan as somebody who drools drama all the time. So he dreams drama, he drools drama, and he demands drama in school curriculums. So that is our Jehan for us. So a big round of applause for Jehan. Uh, our next uh, panelist is Sandhya Oja. She is the co-founder of the Puppetarians. 
but uh, Sandhya, I know as one of the uh, Sesame Street voices and the heart and the soul behind uh, uh, Gully Gully Sim Sim puppets. And I met Sandhya years back when she did a good touch, bad touch uh, Muppet video for us. And uh, her energy is so contagious. Uh, she hasn't grown in all these years. Uh, we all have aged, but she still looks the same, maybe because she lives in puppet land. And that's what we all need to start doing. So big round of applause for Sandhya. And um, our last panelist, last but not the least, is Swara Patel. She calls herself as the Rhythmus Happy Feet and Bloomville Preschool Dance Educationalist and Dance Therapist. But I know Swara as somebody who is passionate about dance, who in this lockdown period has been holding dance sessions for people at six o'clock in the evening. And she has been keeping the energy and the vitality alive in people through her dance sessions. And uh, I know she only missed one because she was unwell. And Swara, it is so nice to see you back here with all your energy and enthusiasm. So she is uh, our dance queen, like you say, drama queen. We have a drama king, but she's our dance queen. So uh, I'm very happy to have all of you here. So I would now want in the same order, if you would like to add to your introduction from the bottom of your socks, over to you, Bela. Hi, Swati. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. I think you completely said what I am really am, like a fun-loving person, you gauge me right. And of course, it's a pleasure being on your show. I'm always looking forward to this. And I'm so happy I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Jehan? Hi, Swati ma'am, everybody. Uh, be with you today. Uh, I miss the live conference room or the live panel discussion where I can see your faces because, you know, drama is an immediate thing yeah. where I get all my responses by looking at your faces and communicating non-verbally with a whole group of people. And that's where I truly get my energy from. Um, yes, from my socks, uh, really what we do and this demanding drama and drooling drama is absolutely right because it is this idea that um, we have to bring drama-based pedagogy into everyday teaching and learning. And it doesn't require a specialist. It doesn't require, uh, it requires all of us to just tap into our own potential for the dramatic, which we have, our own potential for storytelling, which we have. Uh, we work with schools, and especially in the pre-primary, we work with uh, pre-primary departments to bring the creative and creativity, imagination, storytelling capacities of all the teachers uh, alive so that they can use it at maximum power to take their kids on amazing journeys because these are the things that kids at that age uh, respond to the most. And at one, no place should uh, arts be uh, a bolt on in the curriculum. As ma'am said, the arts, the curriculum should breathe through the arts. Absolutely. Uh, Sangya? Did you say that bottom of the sock? Then you <laughs> <laughs> so cute is that? Yeah. No, but really, Swati Ram, thank you so much for putting us all together here. It feels almost like uh, we're meeting, chatting, talking like we would usually do, minus, of course, as Jehan said. It's nothing like uh, sitting in a room and having a conversation about the arts, about what we are doing, about puppetry, about dance and music, etc. But uh, I would just like to add, you introduced us perfectly, and I feel a little emotional. Uh, hearing you say that we worked together long back because when we had just started the puppeteerians you were in fact one of the first people who gave us any assignment at all and believed us that we could do something with the puppets otherwise wherever we would go with the puppets people will always say these are great this is good a lot of fun but we don't need it i know you believe and i believe that we do need the arts and there is no time like this that can prove to us that the arts are needed every day we are i think we're spending more hours watching videos listening to songs dancing and things like that doing creative things at home finding creative solutions uh, solutions through arts to keep ourselves to make ourselves feel more more alive so this is the biggest proof uh, as you rightly said, I've been a puppeteer in Gali Gali Sim Sim. I also run my own puppetry initiative, The Puppeteerians, with uh, another wonderful puppeteer, Hashim. And together we travel across the country. We do live puppet plays. We do workshops with teachers, children, artists, students. Uh, and we do a lot of television and video work too with puppets. Uh, but this is my most favorite thing to do, to talk to teachers. So I'm very excited today. Wow. Swara? 
Oh, I love my tag, the dance queen. So I need to dance a little bit. Uh, Swati Ma'am rightly said that uh, after need this to stay. I think this is keeping people alive in lockdown also. Let me introduce myself. I don't do the introduction that Swati Ma'am gave. Uh, we run a dance academy called Rhythm is Happy Feet, and we are teaching right now in Ten After School Center. Where we specialize in teaching children dance. So I started dancing very late. I started dancing after my second child's birth. Yeah, when I was looking for a right uh, dance class for my child, you know, even I could not find a good class. Were not age appropriate. That the curriculum which helps the child a lot. And here I am today with you talking about it. Thank you. Oh, lovely. That is so fantastic. And uh, today's session, just to uh, uh, help the audience understand, I am a moderator, and I am just going to be asking the questions. But you are going to be hearing more from the panelists, and that's how we want to keep this, because as I said, art uh, is always not given a chance to come out in the forefront, and that is the whole idea of this panel. That if we have forgotten art today. then it's time for us to revive it and bring it in our lives in any form whether it is art in drawing art in painting or art in puppetry you can make a puppet out of anything you can make it out of a bottle you can make it out of a handkerchief uh, it's so easy right sangya and bela yes so it's very important that children must see this around them so that they know that life is not just about books and learning but learning also happens from these kind of art forms i have been very fortunate that i have dabbled in all these art forms including drama jehan uh, i did my basic drama training from trinity and then i actually not many people know this but i featured in a play with uh, 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 what is that actor's name i forget now uh, i'll i'll let you know as soon as we progress that's old age catching up with me <laughs> Uh, but puppetry is something that I have been passionate. Raghuveer Yadav, okay, uh, Raghuveer Yadav. Uh, so I did a play with him. Uh, it was about Raghuveer played a mentally challenged uh, uh, person, and I was his nanny. And uh, Raghuveer was very interested in puppets, and he used to bring them alive and constantly live in their world. So basically, what the play was trying to say that puppets can help you in a lot more ways. than just in creativity and in making you uh, you know feel good uh, so uh, this panel is going to be answering all kinds of questions more about their work and the impact that it can have or is having in early childhood so my first question this time goes out to bela uh, and then we follow the same uh, order that uh, uh, why uh, is puppetry important in early years I personally feel that puppets are magical creatures that can bring any lesson to life. Imagine if you bring out a puppet, you see the kids are more engrossed in your lesson. They're all attentive ears and eyes all open, and they're so engrossed and they really want to listen to what the puppet has to say. But one more thing that the puppeteer has to realize is he has to really hold the audience well. In the sense, did we lose her? It froze. The video froze. Yeah. Uh, ye yes, ma'am. I think she has. She has some dull connection over there. Okay. Never mind. So we. Hello, children. Yes. So that's what I did. She's back. She's back. Looks like. Bill, are you back? Did you get uh, no, that? I will we'll give her a chance once she comes back again. So, Sangya, why don't you take up this question? That according to you, and let's stick to this question is about early childhood. So it's not about uh, uh, the other age groups. Uh, can you tell me why, according to you, is puppetry important in the early years? Uh, Swati ji, as everyone knows, there's a lot of research been done on why puppetry is important, how it helps. But from my own personal experience, I can share some very basic things that I have seen uh, right in front while performing all these years with children, uh, for the camera, online, offline, everywhere. So what I have realized is the color of the puppets. They attract the child's attention a lot. The material that they are built with. it's soft furry or whatever material they attract the child a lot the animated voices that we use with puppets it attracts a lot of attention um now with all of this if we are able to create a lovable character or a crazy zany character 
that, uh, you know, children latch onto that as well. And then if we say something of meaning, of learning, of any, any message that we want to convey, that gets conveyed really easily. Like in Gali Gali Simpson, I perform Elmo, the furry red monster. He's got a nice vibrant red fur. Uh, the moment you look at it, whether on screen or in live interactions, Children just want to reach out and touch Elmo's face or hands. And he's got big yellow nose, which is really prominent. It strikes. The moment Elmo comes out, big googly eyes, they attract children's attention a lot. And then when I start speaking with Elmo, hi, this is Elmo. The moment I say the first line, children are like, so their attention, you, you got their attention. And then, because Elmo embodies love, and joy, uh, children find that energy relatable. And then when I say something important with them, it gets conveyed really easily and they remember it for a long time. Like with Tara. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hi, Swati. Hi, Kabila. Swati ji. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you see, I'm orange, no? In color. Nice color, no? No, very. <laughs> attractive and I think it's in this zone that when children are having fun they're smiling that is when learning happens really easily and the recall value is really high apart from this we all know that puppets are great for social skills development and as you said emotional support that children get from the puppets they feel that they are their friends they can share something with them uh, they build empathy when they work with puppets mm -hmm. one of the things I love about puppets is uh, they take the attention from you. So the moment Tara came on, you stopped looking at me. So I, I find this wonderful. So people who are children who are shy or who are just learning to communicate, it's great if they have any sort of little puppet in their hands and if they talk through it, then the spotlight shifts from them to the puppet and it becomes a place to express their feelings. That and is wonderful. But these are just on the top of my mind to share. Yeah. Wonderful, Sangya. You really uh, made a very pertinent point, especially your last point about, and it works for teachers also, teachers who are a little conscious about themselves. Once they go behind a puppet, suddenly the focus is on the puppet and they are able to communicate more. And, uh, you know, a puppet can make, uh, help you say some of the things that you may be very shy to communicate also. So, <laughs> Feels like I'm not saying it, the puppet is saying it. So, yes, exactly, exactly. So that's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, is Bela back on? Are, are you able to hear me? I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah, now we can hear you. You can talk, talk. You can hear me. Okay, so when I was coming to somewhat like what Sandhya was saying, the same thing. What I want to say is you'd be really active and very attentive in the class and your voice modulation to be very effective because that's the key thing of a puppet. You should, the puppet should be in your hands. Suppose the puppet is lion is there. You can't say hello, hello children, how are you? To be get a lion inside you. Hello children, how are you doing today? So the voice modulation is very, very important in a puppetry. True. True. Secondly, puppets can also teach you discipline. It can also teach you uh, get confidence. Our children become more confident when they're using puppets. Even fine muscle development when they're holding the puppet, how they're wearing it, left hand, right hand movement finger movements, it's very, very important for children. And the class becomes very, very interactive. I've seen that in school. The kids really love watching the teacher perform. And even they want to try it, or then they start giggling, they want to try out the puppet on their own. They come up with really imaginative story. After you finish also, they've got much more things to add to your story. It's a very interactive session. I like that about children. So I think what Pela said was absolutely right. It is up to the puppeteer to bring out the life into a puppet. Otherwise, it's just something lifeless and uh, children are very quick to pick up on that. So voice modulation plays a huge important part in this. And uh, I think it also teaches, as she said, uh, values to children. You can communicate so many things to children in that. So in early years, uh, definitely puppetry has a huge role to play. I'm going to go to Jehan now. Uh, Jehan drama in the early years uh, is not practiced much in 80% uh, of our uh, preschools. Uh, also, when you ask parents, uh, they, they are more interested in putting their children in phonics classes and abacus 
but not never drama. So what, according to you, is the importance of drama in early years? So first of all, I just want to uh, remind everybody, anybody who's heard me speak before will know that drama comes from the word to do, uh, the Greek word. It's like in Hindi, we have karna. Uh, and it is a doing medium. And if you believe, I mean, basically all learning happens from doing. And we know this, it's like the more you do, the more you learn. If you talk about it, you may forget it. If you uh, 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 watch it, uh, you might remember it kind of. But if you do it, the doing of something is the understanding of something. And that is the pinnacle sort of form of education. The, the understanding of something is the most infinite sort of form of education. So when you say drama as a doing medium, if that is our underlying philosophy, then that doing philosophy should be the underlying educational philosophy as well. So that's the first big idea. Uh, when you speak about phonics classes and abacus classes and all of that, it's already taken the learning experience and truncated it into just elocution. Just, uh, you know, elocution and speaking clearly is just one aspect of something. If Sangya, for example, is going to do such a great job with voice modulation or Bela is going to do such a great job with voice modulation, it's not because they've just learned voice modulation. That learning came through the bringing to, the, the task was not learn to voice modulate. The task was learn to bring that orange puppet, Character. learn to bring Bela puppet to life. to life. And in the process of that, voice modulation also ha happened. So to divorce it like that and to divorce phonics and to divorce math and to divorce everything and treat them in these sort of bit parts versus seeing if you can do holistic learning and through drama, which is doing, and therefore, and I think Swara will agree with this about being a whole body learning, tip to toe. We yeah. are engaged kinesthetically, right? I'll give you another piece of gyan very quickly. Um, drama is an aesthetic medium. And aesthetic, the opposite of aesthetic is anesthetic, which you use in surgery and hospitals. <laughs> it, means to, it means to put our senses to sleep. And when you use an aesthetic medium like drama, then what you're doing is you're bringing our senses to life. And when our senses are alive, we learn, right? So this is the first thing. Uh, when you look at drama in the early years especially, just think about what kids do and how kids work. Kids in the early years work through observation. They work through imitation. They work through curiosity. Uh, I've got my notes here. They work through hearing stories and storytelling. Um, uh, they play lots of make-believe. They play lots of imagination exercises. They, they were constantly running to their imagination because their imagination is where they process things for themselves. The stories that they hear is where they process things through uh, from others. So storytelling and imagination become the core thing that you learn through drama. And it's for all the people in that children's world to be really great storytellers and to be really great uh, leaders of imagination exercises or leaders of spaces in which the children can be free to imagine. And that's why drama, because drama delivers all of that. It, 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 it's a philosophy in practice, right? Um, so in the early years, if you have all of this going on, if you have teachers equipped like this, then you automatically equip to take your children on the kind of journeys that they are already on. And just end, you, instead of you telling them, come to my world where I will teach you abacus and phonics, I will come to your world and we will see what we can learn together. Wow. Wow. That was a brilliant example that you gave. Two of them, in fact. Not many people understand aesthetic and anesthetic. Uh, and uh, very important that uh, when we try to teach children the letters and words, we are actually telling them to come into our world. And drama is all about emotions and having fun and letting yourself go. Uh, and that's their world. That's how children want to be. So Especially it's a that age. Fully put, Jehan, that that's exactly what the importance of drama in early years is. Super. Uh, Swara, coming to you. Uh, the only uh, time I did dance was when I joined Shamak Dawar's classes. And after a week, I left them because uh, everybody was that perfect dancer there, you know. And uh, it kind of put me off because I have two left feet. And uh, I said, I'm not here to you, you know, learn dance as a, as a rigorous exercise. Uh, dance to me is something uh, which just comes into you and you feel like twirling and, uh, you know, uh, just having fun with your body parts, uh, uh, moving them around, uh, making yourself happy. But I guess uh, dance has various aspects now. Dance is used to lose weight. Uh, dance is used as a creative medium. So for early years, Farah, what do you think is the importance of dance? 
So let me ask a quick question, which to everybody as well as early years is, uh, you know, when did uh, we as human tribe or our ancestors start dancing? If you really think about this, we started dancing before we started talking. Even before the language was invented, our ancestors dance around the fire, end of the day, around the hunt. Mm. Yeah. So dance is so natural. Mm natural source of joy as you rightly said it's not about steps it's not about me being perfect or it's not about knowing a choreography it's a, it's a natural source of joy given to us to express now um, uh, if you see when a child is growing up the primary intelligence uh, is movement movement is a way they learn and acquire knowledge around them so movement is very crucial in growing years. The more the movement, the more child develops completely, including the brain, which you heard about all the time. Swara, sorry to interrupt. Can you come closer to your mic? We've got a feedback that you're not heard properly. Or maybe you can speak louder. Yeah, is that okay? Am I better? Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. So movement is the uh, way a child acquires the primary intelligence in the initial year. Touching, feeling, rolling, climbing. And this has to continue as they grow also. But what happens is um, somewhere we make them, so first we say start running, start running. When they start running, we say stop running. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we are confused with what we want from our children. Um, so instead of using the natural tool which God has given us, we're resorting to things like excessive screen. We're getting joy from excessive screen time or we're getting joy from binge eating, yeah? So if you use this tool a lot in early years, they will not go to unwanted addiction and they will mm. not go to getting joy from wrong things. Well so said. Go back there. And that is what I really want to tell very in a very clear and bold way where I feel that, not I feel, I think dance is not an elective or dance is not an option. I think dance is very necessary to human life because if it wasn't, our ancestors would not be dancing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very well said, Farah. Uh, most importantly, while I was listening to all of you talk, I was just thinking about Howard Gardner's nine intelligences, which every school says we are an MI school, we are an MI school. And if you look into any of the arts that you are performing, you, know, you are indulging in, all these nine intelligences are very much activated in that form. So uh, I really feel this is something that schools must take up now and not call them, what do you feel? Do you like it when schools call it co-curricular activities or extracurricular activities or hobbies? I mean, I, I feel that's such an insult to the arts when you say it's a hobby. And imagine all of you are using this hobby as a profession. As a profession. So I have kind of eased into this question uh, 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 and uh, very cheated all of you all because I've not told you that I'll be asking you this question. But my question to each one of you now is, how did you end up making a hobby a profession? So we'll start with Jehan. Um, so uh, I, was, I was going through college in a world of STEM. Uh, I went to a CBSE school uh, I was doing biology and math and computer science and all of those things because you had to do that in order to get into the next thing. <laughs> if you were in commerce by the 11th and 12th, that means you could not become a doctor later on. So you had to stay at the highest level of academics uh, in order to later on drop down into your options. Yeah. Um, and that was a big problem because the whole time I was also doing a lot of extracurricular work where I just had more fun. Uh, and uh, organizing uh, school events, going with editorial board, just this stuff came naturally to me, but it was, it always felt like uh, it was an indulgence or I was not allowed to do it. At one point I was banned from going to debates uh, because uh, my academics were suffering. And so I would literally like sneak to the debate in order to oh, wow. go and have the debate. Um, so things like that used to happen to me. And then I just accidentally discovered theater and I realized that that it was the place where I could live completely as a human being and live an integrated experience. And so I was fortunate to have that exposure and to have a, a family that allowed me to think like that. And it was very scary for my family as well to let me sort of leave law or 
uh, international relations or medical science. Uh, it was very scary for them to let me do that. Um, but I just knew that I was, they saw me miserable in one place and they saw me ecstatic in the other. So wow. they let me do that. So, um, and I think that our entire world is taught us to be uh, STEM people instead of STEAM people, which is science, yeah. technology, and uh, I can't remember what E was, but engineering, engineering and arts, then arts and then maths, and then yeah. maths. So A is an integral part of this whole thing, and and now they're all waking up to it. But I will tell you, uh, thinking about the times we are in right now, um, because of the difficulty that we are about to go through over the next uh, uh, six financial quarters, I imagine. Uh, that there will be a lot of uh, time for anxiety and pause. Um, yeah. A lot of jobs, a lot of jobs, a lot of parents will be in trouble. A lot of schools are going to have hardship. We are going to have hardship, all of us. But at this point in time, we have to sort of find where our resilience lies and yeah. our adaptability lies and our ability to, to roll with change lies. And all of this is stuff that the arts prepare you for because the arts keep you creative. They keep you open. They keep you responsive. Yeah. Um, and this is what you need at this point in time. Absolutely. So um, uh, thanks for sharing because it must have been quite scary uh, to enter a profession which uh, most people would feel that uh, where is the... You know, many people say this to uh, a lot of people, especially my husband who is a writer, that uh, this is okay, but profession kya hai aapka? You know, dal roti kahan se aati hai? So Sangya, have you ever faced that kind of fear or that kind of problem because you made a hobby into your profession? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And I feel very uh, strange answering this because it almost, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. So I feel really strange answering this because I feel that I've lived in a sort of a, some other parallel world where this was not important. Um, the arts were important. My father is a writer. Uh, my mom was a brilliant singer, dancer. Uh, my dadaji had been a great laureate in Bihar, Patna. And I grew up with arts all around me. Every day wow. there were Sangeet Riyas happening, dance practices happening. From a very early age, I developed interest in Indian classical music, Indian classical dance, Bharatanatyam, which I learned for eight years, even though the course was only for six. So my parents were always like, what do you want to do? And I was like, as a child, I think if all of us given a choice, we would never say that I want to go study maths. Yes, <laughs> I, absolutely. 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 I want to dance, I want to sing, I want to do that or this. And my parents were always like, okay, go, then do this. Whatever you like, do that, but put all your heart into that. Just make sure of that. So I lived in a world wherein all this was important. My, my friends from school, college, my teachers, everyone remembers me for being this girl who would always have gurus on her feet, or always being in the musical music class, music room. Uh, I never paid too much attention to studies. I don't know. And my life was brilliant and perfect. And my parents were great. <laughs> so, so wonderful. So yeah. like, it's like you eased into it. It was, an, it was a natural choice. When I saw my master, my teacher doing puppetry, and I was a media student. So my studies were going on simultaneously. Yes, they said, you have to complete your studies. So I did my uh, master's. And so during that time, I saw my teacher who was puppeteering and I, he wasn't my teacher then and I fell in love and I said, oh, what is this man doing? And I want to learn what is this because puppetry seemed like it was dance, music, uh, drama, all rolled into one. All rolled into one. Very yeah. true. Very true. Yeah. So, and I've been a fan of the arts, as I said, uh, and a practitioner. So I fell in love. I said, I have to learn this. That's how I got into puppetry and then to Gali Gali Sim Sim and other things. And now I, um, I've been a professional puppeteer for 15 years now. I don't miss wow. I think we give too much importance to the jobs that we do. Yeah. And not otherwise, yeah. other than the life that we are living. But I, living. But I think right now, the shift is happening. Wherein we are now trying to focus on how should we live our life. And the job is just a part of the life. Not the life. Absolutely. My question now to Swara and Bela both. Uh, is, is, uh, is dance and puppetry uh, your profession or is it still a hobby? It's Swara, a profession for me. Sorry. Okay. Swara? It is a hobby turned into a profession, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So now I would call it a profession. So you say you pursue your passion. So it's a passion, I would say. Right? Um, uh, and uh, as you 
I would like to add something to this about the whole discussion is going about uh, uh, the question you asked uh, Sandhya. So you know what I really feel uh, why are dancers or artists lost is because like you said, as it is taught as an extracurricular, there is no curriculum which is available systematically which progresses. Yeah. yeah? So, you know, as you said, there are nine intelligence. Even Sachin Tendulkar has to be coached, right? So what happens is the logic and uh, the logic and the math is logic and the language gets coached right from nursery. So people who are good in that or naturally they blossom. Now, people who are good at kinesthetic also needs to be coached as much as they're... Now, what happens that coaching is missing? Uh. So that coaching is missing in a systematic way. The, the, the curriculum changes with the teacher change. Teacher badal gaya, curriculum badal gaya. There is no curriculum which is followed. So there is no progress. If there is no progress, how will that kinesthetic learner be coached? So the child is lost. Until the time you reach the 10th grade, even if you love that ask so much, you're not equipped enough to go and say, this is what I want to do. The child is lost, not sure, can I dance? I'm not, my body's not ready, but because by the time, if you pass 10th grade, you can say, I want to become an engineer, you have the base ready. So I think that is what is missing in education. Of Absolutely. Jehan, I'll come to you after I take Bela in. Bela? Yes. Is it your profession or is it your hobby come profession? It was earlier my passion, but turned into profession. And of course, when you're getting paid for doing something you like, I think that's the best thing that can happen to me. And I enjoy doing puppets. I like to see children smile. Actually, I'm wearing happy faces around me. I just love that. So that's the reason why I entered this profession. In spite of being a principal, now I still go for my shows and I enjoy being with kids as much. I know. I, I know that how, how much importance you still give. You've yes. skipped many ECA meetings because uh, you had yes. a show. And that right. shows your dedication. Uh, and your love for the children. Yeah, Jehan, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just to build off Swara's point, uh, when you go through a medium like dance, for example, and you are picking up a vocabulary of movement, uh, a, a kinesthetic vocabulary, because you learn to do different choreographies, you learn to do different sequences, you all do, do this. It's so integrated to things like memory. It, it actually evolves your language center. It evolves your logic center. It involves your exhaust evolves your causality centers. Um, all of those inherent sort of cerebral processes end up, we realize that they're not cerebral, just like meditation tells us how to calm our mind, which is take the body and calm our mind. Dance is almost an academic program for the head. And so uh, if you do that, even with object manipulation or even with uh, puppet manipulation, it's the same thing. You're actually exercising mental musculature that allows you to then uh, 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 learn language better, uh, academically better, uh, uh, do logic and rational problem solving better. The Absolutely. A, the the A is 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 the the pyramid on which everything else balances. You, if you without it, uh, to exercise the muscle of logic by just doing logic problems, no, you've got to just Absolutely. everything Absolutely. has to be involved. Very well, because when many people talk about muscle memory. Uh, it is these art forms that actually give you that muscle memory to remember your words or to remember your actions, to remember your movements, etc. Now we come to the end part of the panel. And this is where I want you to make it more interesting and interactive for the audience. Uh, everybody knows that today, if I want to do something in puppetry, I can go to Pinterest and get some ideas. Or if I want to do online dance, I go on to Tata Sky and learn some dance steps. Or if I want to do online drama, I will just log into something. But I want you all to give uh, some ideas to our audience that's listening. Uh, that offline, if they want to do something right now, offline with their children, uh, what can they do in puppetry? What can they do in dance? And what can they do in drama? Some ideas, some tips coming from you who are the experts is definitely going to help our panelists because our panelists right now are 80% educators and 20% parents. So many of them are looking A, for ideas to put into their online learning, but they want that online 
idea to go to do an offline activity. I hope you are understanding what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. The, Absolutely. Uh, idea to go online to the students because that's the only way children can receive the idea right now. But the schools want the child to do it offline. So schools are right now looking to you, the art specialists, for how can we make the child be uh, engaged in something concrete, in some dance form, in some uh, drama activity or in some puppetry. So if you can give us ideas, uh, the, the, the uh, floor is open to you all. Each one of you have eight minutes, which is quite a long time on a panel. Uh, eight minutes to give us your ideas so that these panelists can now take a note of that and then can then include it in their sessions. And uh, my word of advice to all the panelists is today we are not taking questions, but you can still post your questions here. And Mansi from our team will be noting down all the questions and she will send it out to the panelists who can then answer it in an article, et cetera. And uh, at the end, all the panelists will give their contact details and you all can directly contact them also because that is what we want. We want more of you to feel enthused after this panel to include the arts like puppetry, drama and dance into your planning for the children. So let's start this one with Jehan. Jehan, what are the ideas that you can give the panelists, I mean, the audience for drama? Any activities that they can do with children? And please remember all the panelists, this is an early childhood platform. So please give ideas for early childhood. So basically the first thing you have to know is that you cannot uh, put your early, learn, early years learner into just some kind of a passive mode by putting them in front of a screen and talking to them from across the screen. Uh, they need tactile, human, social, emotional connection. All of that has to happen. They need the other human beings around them to interact yes. with them. So now if 80% of our, our participants on this panel are educators, then your, your misses in terms of your rush to get online, rush to finish the curriculum, rush to engage with your parents, is not to then take over the teaching in the home. But actually, and this is a really great opportunity for education across all grades, which is now that these kids are all at home with their parents and their parents are stuck at home as well, somewhere use this to reshift the balance of education to kind of a joint uh, activity between the parent and teacher. Instead of it being 95% teacher and 5% parent because parents have to work and Rosie Roti Kamana Vagera, at least shift it back to a 70-30 relationship. So you have this opportunity now. By saying that, I'm going to just say that uh, the main thing is to talk to the parent and the learner together and to give the parent a different kind of coaching, a different kind of set of tools, so that at least in the one hour of quality time that they have in the evening or the, you know, whatever they have time that they can carve out with their child, you can guide them through useful and wonderful creative activities that the parent can do with the child. This is the first so any, one. Any suggestions on these activities, Bihar? So I don't just have a suggestion. I have an entire library. Uh, one of the most amazing things that happened to us at lockdown was that we were uh, completely stuck in terms of, well, now what do we do with our time? We can't be in a classroom with kids. We can't be in a, in a, in a school and set up with educators working with developing their skills. And a lot of our drama educators, led by uh, uh, our senior drama specialist, uh, Shazia Jifri, uh, and her team, Kriti Srividya, uh, they basically called out to all of their drama-based education community and said, can you bring all the storytelling you know, all the mask-making activities you know, all the dance activities you know, all the things you do for, for children, K to 12, and can you just start to uh, share them in a way that they can be shared that a parent and a child watching together can do something at home that is, is interactive amongst them. We give the suggestion, they take it forward. And that's so called the school library project. So, so we're posting one idea a day right now and they're all on Facebook or Instagram or on YouTube. It's called the school library project. Uh, just do the school library project. And I've asked uh, Harsha to uh, please post it on both your Facebook page and in this chat window so that you can see it. So it'll be there soon. Otherwise, we can always share it later. So definitely okay. look at that because the fundamental idea here is interactivity. Mm. Uh, the second thing that I have to say to all of you, especially the 20% parents on this group and the 80% uh, teachers, is 
don't worry about keeping your child occupied. Yeah. Do not worry about it. Okay? Let the child be. Boredom is the best stimuli for creativity. Okay? Uh, I am, I walk, I'm, I'm busy working. My wife is busy working. We're all busy trying to hold down jobs, do dharu pocha, do everything right now because that's what lockdown has given us. And those are our circumstances and we're blessed, by the way, compared to many people out there. But the point is that we're walking past the living room and suddenly like there's an entire like castle of, of cushions. And it's, I mean, every day it's the same pile of cushions around my two kids because they've created it. But one day it's an army tank. The next day it's a castle. The third day it's a coronavirus fighting machine. Um, it's whatever the kids want it to be. And in that, they are expressing, they are finding their own ways. Just let them be. At best, the best thing you can do is don't tell them, ki masti mat karo. Give them a space in which they can do masti and let them do masti because recognize that masti is actually creativity at play. Absolutely. Okay? Um, Absolutely. And, and if you're going to go into that world, go and join them. So that's the second one. Let your kids be brave. Let your kids be bored. Sorry, let your kids be bored and let their creativity emerge. The third one, and please, the, the third one, and this is really important, is it is a myth. I know you refer to us as specialists. We have just been doing what we love and doing what is inherent to every single human being more than other human beings. Uh, we spend more time with it. So therefore, we can puppeteer better, we can do drama better, we can dance better. But I think everybody on this panel will agree that you might be, uh, you might be somebody who's had a desk job and an intellectual cerebral job all your life. Today, if you decide to start dancing, by tomorrow, there'll be a move that you can bust into. By the day after, there'll be a puppet you can manipulate. By the uh, day after that, there'll be a story that you can tell. And so don't think that it requires us specialists to do this. You are your child's specialist. You don't have a choice. You've never had a choice. Your child and you are stuck together for your whole life. You've never had a choice. Trust me, my mother, she knows this for a fact and she can attest to this. Uh, so my point being um, is, is, look at this. So what stories do I tell? Are, okay, you're doing a piece of cooking in the, in the kitchen. You're doing a jharu pocha. You're doing some errand in the house. Uh, Think about the first time you learned to do it. Think about somebody in your own life. Your stories can come from your own life. You can tell them about how your mother used to do things or how your father used to do things. And you can start your stories from very real, honest places that are true to you. The key thing over there is to look at the honesty in yourself and use that honest, real, lived experience that you had as a child, you had growing up. And you just recount that story to start with. Then, of, course you, can go, then you, of course, you can go into... And, if you associate your stories with chores, I promise you, your child will be doing the chores with you. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, so that's one. Uh, the second one is to then take your stories. If you want to tell them a kahani, tell them a kahani. Uh, so start by just telling them the kahani and just get to the point where you hold the pause and let the child say, so kya hua? daddy batao, mummy batao, and just enjoy the tale of that moment. Then later on, get better in your kahanis, just add a little bit of voice. Start using the voice too. Then later on, what the hell? Three days or four days after Kahani, why don't we just play the Kahani? Use, use the, the bartans, the dishes, the cloths, the towels, the, the, the saris, use everything in your house and, and put on a play. Before there was television, before there was 24-7 radio and media, families used to do little gharwala nataks. Societies used to do little gharwala nataks. And they just used whatever. And we've seen all of that in our, like film and television love to show us a family home where they're doing crazy stuff. Are you, why are we watching it on television? Do it yourself. Take your kids and tell the story of the Ramayana, the Mahabharat. Tell one of the uh, 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 Panchatantra stories. Uh, have fun. You know so many stories. So take one of those storybooks and, and take it on a print. And don't even stay within the story structure. Uh, play with the story. Take it on an adventure somewhere else. Go somewhere else. But you as parents, you as educators, as educators, your job right now for the next, at least till the 3rd of May, if not longer, is to educate the parents in the early years. It's not to educate the child. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and so there are all of these ideas. Now, the, the, uh, the school library project is giving you a bunch of ideas, but there are a trillion ideas more. Those ideas can start you off. Um, and uh, You've and given just start us with that. Ideas. Yeah, and just do it. I mean, you want to get out of your 
uh, general, uh, you know, we're all in lockdown. We're all under different kinds of stress. You're absolutely right when you started the conversation and said uh, there's going to be a, a, a large pressure on our mental health. Uh, yeah. It's there. Yeah. It, it, to, to deny it is a, is a bad idea. Uh, fine, use this space to also just forget your worries for a little while. Because your child is not worrying right now. Your Absolutely. child only worries when they see you worrying. So Perfect. go Perfect. into their world. Doable ideas, Jahan. And yeah. uh, I'm sure these can be converted into these uh, uh, exercises that the ch schools are sending out to the children. Uh, you can always ask the parent to tell a story to the child and then uh, uh, make costumes from whatever is available around you in the home. It will become such a lovely, buzzing family activity. So thank you for these suggestions. These are absolutely wonderful. I'm and now don't worry about the output. Sorry, don't worry about the final product, the process. Yeah, yeah it, you don't have to worry about it being a hit or a flop. Uh, Just have fun. That makes a child happy is ultimately a hit. So uh, that's not something to be worried about. Uh, Bela, I'm going to come to you because you've always been uh, uh, put at the end. Uh, so I'm going to come to you. What are the some tips that you can give to the educators and parents uh, to do at home? See, at the moment, since it's lockdown, I'm sure there's very less material avail available at home. But what you could do is maybe things like empty water bottles that you have. You can ask the kids to put eyes on it, make little hair, make a little dress with maybe a napkin also. Create some puppet out of things which is which are there at home. It could be a matchbox, it could be a, a box puppet, which is also like a soap box could be used. You can even use uh, shampoo bottles. You can use the wooden spoon, the ladder behind. Give it some eyes, give it some hair, have some yeah. dress from down, you know. Just create something. In fact, I just, while talking to you just now, I made something small just with a pen on my little finger. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, just two so eyes and nose and little uh, with a napkin behind is just some puppet. Oh, Hello, how are you? Just talk with it, you know, just, just enjoy with all these things, you know. See, that is so brilliant. Just right now, I just did it in two minutes. So I could just make something out of it. Yeah, and of course, also done something. <laughs> I, saw, I, saw, I, saw, I saw my friend on Zoom. Where is he? Where is she? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a quick one, Jehan. Quick one. <laughs> no, quick one. Quick thinking. Creative people. That's why I feel this car, this world should be run by creative people. Because yeah, you're on mute. a better place for sure. Yeah, it would yeah. definitely be a much better place. So, Bela, oh, thank okay. you so much. That's exactly That's what fine. I think. Uh, uh, children would love to do around with all the material that is right now available in their homes. Right. Uh, coming to Swara, uh, Swara, what uh, uh, tips would you like to give for dance? Um, everybody loves to dance, you know, like everybody here, just put your hands up. Come on, just put your hands up and shrug your shoulders and see the smile on your face come alive. Don't you do that? Yeah, it's so, it's as easy as that. <laughs> Start dancing. What you can do with little? Yeah, Jehan, that's it. <laughs> what you can really do is, I'll tell you something: is children come alive with the music they know. Like when we go to a party, the song playing could be a chart buster in other country. But if you don't know the song, you might not connect as much, right? So to start off at home. You make a playlist of song which the child knows, you know. What is very important is to please parents and educators keep the music age appropriate. There is yeah, what I will do is, Thank you for yeah, saying what, that. What I will do is once we are done with the session, instead of telling you where to go, which place to click and all, uh, uh, instead of taking time there, because the content available is immense. Yeah. Even if I give you the best of content right now, give you names, if you don't know how to use that content, it'll have no use. Yeah. So I would spend little time on telling you how to use the content. All the content I typed on the Facebook link, like 100 links I can give you on Facebook. So all the educators and all the parents, when you get the content, look at the content so that um, and find the music which your child or your student know or which you use in class to connect immediately. It's like a hook. Yeah. Start with the simple things. If you're teaching, if you're teaching um, in a live class, like a Zoom meeting as an educator, get up from your chair. A lot of time, so much effort for teachers to get up and do something. So of course you get up and you get involved in dancing because usually what's happening nowadays for children, video is sitting and watching. So you put a, a parent will put on a dance video, the child will still watch. 
<laughs> yeah, they have forgotten that you can dance along with the video. Yeah. So you need to get up initially. I know you will say, "Oh God, I have so much work. I am looking for idea which you can do by yourself. I don't want to get involved." But trust me, it's just a hook. Start dancing a little bit; they'll be on their own. Okay, but batana to padega na kya karna hai. So start dancing with them. Play their favorite music. Age appropriate music. I will give you the whole list. Even Bollywood music, there are lovely songs. Yeah, yeah. love you, Zindagi. What a beautiful song it is. Yeah. So even Bollywood, Bollywood has good music. Choose the right music. Yeah. Um, and um, try initially action songs because the little kids, nursery, junior, senior. So when they understand the instruction, they follow like this. Then big big words. Mera pyar, mera ye, mera wo. They can't understand that and they can't follow. So word action association. So they can action. They can associate an action with a word. Yeah. So they can follow well. So choose action song initially to start off with. Um, very simple. Uh, if you are little bit, if you have little bit of dancing in you and you love dancing. butterfly life cycle can become a beautiful dance yeah that you become a let's do let's become a caterpillar and walk 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 and this beautiful dance every day thing like you know what um uh, so many things every oh my god you know like when i teach dance to my students i said bulb kholo bulb kholo bulb kholo ya kapde sukhao kapde sukhao kapde sukhao that <laughs> dance very simple one more thing Parents and educators, please remember: this age is not about perfect steps. Yeah, like athlete, even at the eight month, is never going to start running. Same way, fine roughness in motor skills is not this age. So, if they don't get the step perfect, who cares? It is not for about perfection. It's about just dancing around, jumping around, moving around. That is what is very important. Again. Wonderful. it's all about that because it's about moving like making them move which usually they would not move in everyday life that's what builds a motor skill to next level right now uh, one more thing that you can you see how much i'm moving that is how i am dancers move not not by talking <laughs> i can see myself and i find it funny anyway so one more thing which you can do at home is uh, you know sometimes you can use the phone the right way gadgets if used right way there are boon so you you look at a choreography you together learn a simple choreography and record a choreography and in recording the choreography that excitement will be there and they'll see themselves dancing yeah it's a thing to do and you know they will love seeing themselves and the parent and you know while trying to record you will try to perfect it a little bit you try to sing a little bit you will try to interact so when you are doing those whole thing of you you have a goal by end of it it will become more fun yeah so you can make a choreography and again the same thing you can ask your friends to make the choreography i'll do this one para you do this one para and then you can all put it together we are all editors at home sitting so then they look forward to oh my friend video now this is the way they stay in touch with their friends yeah my friend video is going to come they're going to dance on this line i got to dance on this line so let's mama dance and eventually that way they get connected to their friends also so it's there are so many ways that in dance to a child's life that's a brilliant idea aswara uh, uh, because schools are right now looking for activities to give to their children uh, they can select a song and give one one part of that song to each child and ask them to dance on it and then put it all together as one song and uh, uh, while it did Yes, it's even different. It's all about dance. That's so brilliant. Thank you so much. These are fantastic ideas. Coming to you, Sangya. Anything that children and teachers and parents can do where puppetry is concerned. So, um, so um, you know, I just find that whenever we do something with our hands, it is really therapeutic. It makes us feel reassured, and we do need a lot of that right now. Uh, like how when you cook. just makes you feel nice so to make something with your own hands it's always great and you don't need to see any video for that or follow any steps because we are not yet creating a professional big puppet here you're looking at creating something that you find interesting so i'll just suggest you right now to not throw away anything at, from home right now don't throw away anything in trash everything is gold as of now any um, you know envelope uh, paper bags uh, toilet paper rolls uh, spoons maybe or whatever there is so any dry trash you just collect in a litter box in a trash can 
and then once every week or whenever you like it just empty that that trash can among the family members and say now let us try and build something out of this material maybe a puppet maybe a creature that we like and i need to remind all of you all that puppet when i say puppet what you see in your head is only limited by our imagination and by yeah. our exposure to what puppets are but puppet world is huge so anything can be a puppet when i say anything actually anything a stapler can be a puppet right i yeah. am how are you all so you don't need to create only sometimes we feel no that we have all thumbs we can't make anything so you <laughs> just use toys maybe already available there at your home i just need i want to share a little puppet that a teacher built in delhi and uh, she she gifted it to me i just love this see this is all paper and uh, a little bit of piece of cloth and a tt ball on a spring it's beautiful and so articulate so beautiful things like and put on a jharo stick that's it so lovely so imagine from trash we can create such pretty things and bring them to life on scrunchies you know when we tie up the things we tie up if you just put two tt balls and two big black bindis it becomes a puppet no <laughs> so easy and no in no time at all i love what you did bela it's beautiful that is that is puppet if you have show yours also yeah i mean born and you sanka also yours also and this is a walk oh, puppet go. oh look at yeah, that look at that hello everybody hi how are you look at the jar of puppet so, so cute <laughs> Things that, and I showed you the sock puppet. This is the easiest to make: a sock, two TT balls, two bindis, and we are done. And whatever you want to add to it, things like this. So just use whatever you have at this moment. Create your puppet, and no judgment, because all puppets are beautiful. We are not having a competition here. We are just trying to have fun. All puppets are beautiful. Whatever you're going to create will be specific for you and good for you. Uh, but. only creating the puppet is not the final thing not the we can have the best puppet in the world but, but if we don't bring it to life then it's just a toy uh, a puppet means something inanimate that we animate we put yes. life into it we breathe life into it so one of the things is think of who this character is so whatever puppet you created see i am no nose no nostrils no wind pipe No lungs, no respiratory system, but I can breathe. <sighs> so cute. <laughs> I invest, invest my energy, my sense of play and performance into this form. So whatever kind of puppet you have, even if it's a toy, it's an action figure or doll. If you move it in a way that it brings, it, it comes to life, and you're able to say a message, see a line, sing a song, do a dance, tell a story, then that's your puppet. i would all urge all of you if you have the time and if you want to see uh, how to make interesting puppets with stuff that you can easily find you can go to our youtube page as well uh, by the name puppeterians and you can find a lot of ideas there and there are a lot of ideas online but try and do this offline as much as you can because it's all about you having fun That's absolutely it. absolutely so i was just fiddling with my specs and my specs started looking at me Oh my god. Oh oh my god. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh my god. So you can just have fun with so many things and uh, uh we're running short of time otherwise I would have loved to get some more ideas from all of you because uh, it's right now a world where I, it's run by ideas and that's what people who are in the arts have lots of. So I think it's very important right now for all us all of us to understand that uh, uh it is the reading writing and the number work which are the co curricular activities basically life is about expressions life is about emotions life is about your uh, uh, movement life is about your uh, e uh, how you express those emotions and i think art is that one platform where you are able to bring to life all your emotions and all your connections with each other so i would like to thank all of you all uh some words that stuck uh, from all your talks i'm going to just repeat those words moods uh, uh, multiple intelligence muscle memory musti uh, magic uh, let children be bored tell stories and then convert those stories into costumes and drama 
नौटंकी करो बहुत अच्छा है वो डांस के लिए भी पापेट्री के लिए ड्रामा के लिए भी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू कैन कन्वर्ट डेली चोर्स एंड डेली थ्रैश इन टू दीज एक्टिविटीज ऑल्सो शेयर आई वुड से विथ ऑल दीज आइडियाज मेक योर ओन टिकटॉक videos do i hate tiktok but make your own tiktok videos rather than forwarding all these silly tiktok videos and whatsapp forwards which are going on why don't you make your own one and uh, why don't everybody just take uh, dance into their lives uh, bring drama into your life and bring puppetry into your life and fir batao hame ke masti hai ke nahi hai because right now your life is missing something if you don't have all of these so i'm going to say bye to all of y'all with my little friend here bye 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 chup raho don't talk back talking back again oh my god so bye to everybody thank you so much Uh, bye bye for us to stay connected and so i would request all the audience to send in their questions and uh, all of these four panelists are available on social media please reach out to them learn from them grow with them and uh, let earth remain earth with the art in it so that it doesn't become air bye bye are you